You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. Exodus 32. Who done it? Until Jeremy drew my attention to it on the free Old Testament audio blog, I'd never noticed that there's a really interesting play in Exodus 32, the story of the golden calf, with the question of who brought Israel out of Egypt. It's really interesting because there are three different opinions expressed in the chapter and the different opinions are attributed to different people. Now, when you see something like that, any biblical scholar's eye should light up. A source critic will, of course, attribute the three to three different sources, in this case, J, E and D. But a narrative critic, and I'm far more of a narrative critic than anything else, a narrative critic will immediately want to look at the interpersonal dynamics that's going on. What's happening between the people in this text as they discuss who brought Israel up out of the land of Egypt. You remember the story. Moses has been up on the mountain and he's been there a long, long time. And so the people gather round Aaron and say to him, Come, make gods for us. Who shall go before us? As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what's become of him. That's the first opinion. Attributed to the people. And they want some proper gods because the man who brought them up out of the land of Egypt seems to be vanished and not returning. Aaron goes along with it and they, presumably all the people, in verse 4 say these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. So first the people have attributed to Moses the bringing up out of the land of Egypt and then they attribute them to this new Elohim, this new God or gods, depending on just how you translate it, and that gets repeated a bit later on. And then in verse 9, the Lord says to Moses, I've seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. So I'm going to fulfill my promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but I'm going to fulfill it only through you. I'm going to bump off the rest of them. Verse 11, but Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? You see, Moses attributes it to God. Fascinating stuff. So what's going on? Well, first of all, the people set it up. This is a question over who has the power of Elohim, of God or gods. And the way they've seen events so far, that power was wielded by Moses which is fine and good. It's quite convenient to have a god wandering around with you that you can talk to and bully and persuade. But then Moses vanishes into the mountain. And so they want some proper gods. Gods they can lug around with them and keep handy in case they need it. And Aaron obliges. Notice that God repeats the you brought out of the land of Egypt in advance in setting up the story to Moses. It's God who tells Moses that the people have attributed the action to him. Like two parents disagreeing about whose child it is who is misbehaving. God seems to rather like the idea of blaming Moses. In verse 7 he repeats it. Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely, he says. Moses, however, returns the favour. When God has declared that he's going to remove the lot of them, verse 11, Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt? You see, this story is about who brought Israel out of Egypt and the different opinions are spread out for us to see and in case we're too quick to easily attribute the thing to God God himself is the one who underlines that the people have attributed it to Moses. Moses isn't fooled. He knows that the action is God's and God's alone and he makes it quite clear that he understands. Verse 12 Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn your fierce wrath, change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac and Israel your servants. And God does change his mind. You see how interesting it is to spot these little rough patches in the text and to pull at them and to see what comes out. All biblical scholars do it. 
Oh yes, and I'm sure there's another podcast here for young David over at Lingamish. What on earth's going on here that Moses has to change God's mind about snuffing the entire people? But that's another story, or at least it's the same story but another podcast. Bye for now. <laughs>